lot of people in the esports industry like to, you know, pretend that maybe you're a very popular player or whatever, and that's why you can be all high and mighty or whatever, compared to the people that do more of the background work, like managers or even fans. I don't feel that way at all. I want to make sure that everyone knows that I stand on the same ground, you know? I'm the same as other people. I just, people just like watching what I do. That's the only difference. That's like the moment I realized that like being smarter than your opponent is often the best way to beat them. <laughs> if you're not as good as them individually, you can just be smarter. <laughs> so yeah, I would cheese them with like things that I practiced and like thought, like thought about, like their rune setups and like builds and champion picks. And that's what I did. So I, I got some good old cheese in there. <laughs> I started playing solo queue like straight away when I hit level 30. Like I didn't really know it was like a difference. <laughs> I just played. And uh, yeah, season three is like when I really started like, grinding solo queue. And uh, I played a lot. <laughs> I played so much ranked. I was, uh, you know, I went all the way from bronze to silver to gold. Uh, I went all the way up ladder to diamond. All the way diamond one, it took me like 1500 games. It took me like the whole year. I played so much. I think that's where like, like the foundation of the way I perceived the game kind of came from. Where it's like, th just to, lots of raw experience playing so many different champions because like I played every every single champion actually at the time it was like 107 champions I believe somewhere like that I remember like on my OPGG you could see all of them like I had like 107 champions I locked in throughout the, throughout the entire season so like I tried everything at least once season six uh yeah I just started playing top lane and gangplank got reworked and I, I was just like wow the champ's so awesome and then in in my region it's like a very small like there aren't many people that are from there that play League High Elo, and it turns out that someone found out that I was from Belgium, and I spoke Dutch. So they asked me if I wanted to join their team. And I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not used to playing, like I'm not used to like committing to top lane as well, but I think I play it pretty well. So yeah, I'm down, like, whatever, let's try it. So I joined their team and then I was just like, I guess I'm playing top lane. <laughs> yeah, I think there was a period like where I was like playing some and, and I was watching like LEC and I was just like, yeah, I can do that, <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can do that better than this guy. I actually don't watch that much Pro League at all. Uh, I watch it whenever I'm going on stage. So like I'm, I'm like I'm waiting for, for the match to end. So I get to play and I'm sitting there like, yeah, I watch the game, you know, backseat of it. That's always fun. I, I usually only catch the games that are like meaningful for me uh, because I'm like supporting a player or I want to watch someone play that I respect or whatever. So honestly, I don't watch that much Pro League at all. I never have. Most of the content I consume are like one tricks. Either I'm watching a stream of like a one-trick player or like high-elo players. But when I'm watching like YouTube videos, I usually watch one-trick players. So yeah, actually I used to watch the Bows for a while because he was playing Sound a lot and I would play. I was a bit of an avid Sound enjoyer. I would watch, like right now I'm watching this Lee Sin top one-trick. It's pretty, pretty cool stuff actually. I'm, I'm almost convinced that Champions OP top line when I watch that guy play. <laughs> um, uh, I, I'm watching his Aatrox one-trick, his Darius one-trick. And I'm just like, you know, just consuming the information, you know, like just trying to get a feel for like, I, I, I can see that these champions are very strong. The question is, is where did they fit in draft, right? So for me, when I'm when I'm playing as a professional, it's like really what I strive for is like being so good at the champion individually that people go like, wow, I need to pick that champion now, you know? Entertainment's like a big part of my professional career for me. I genuinely consider being an entertaining player to be important. I come into the game with a mindset of like, I'm not gonna play this game doing nothing ever. Like if I do that, I feel bad about it. You know, it's like that's time on stage, you know, like it's, it's a big production. Like I want it to be something that people have, like are able to look forward to. Like you should be like looking forward to a 5v5 or looking forward to a big moment in the game. Cause those games are like people just hug their Nexus and they like give up everything. And then the last fight they do is when their Nexus towers are down. It's like, my Lord, like, how boring is that? Like what a waste of an opportunity playing on stage to play like that, you know? At least make it something, you know, make it exciting, make it something memorable for everyone involved. Obviously, that's my perspective and I get that that might be a bit controversial, but I don't care. Like that's, I fundamentally believe in that. I fundamentally believe that the reason people watch is because it's entertaining. And uh, I care about making sure that the games I play are fun to watch. Um, so when I met my girlfriend in season eight, um, that was her favorite champion. <laughs> she told me it was her favorite champion. I was like, all right, well, like I thought it was like a cute idea because we just got together and I wanted to be cute. You know how it is. 
um, to hover that champion in champ select because actually Hilly would hover Draven Ori and that would be shortened for Dory, which is his girlfriend. So I stole that from him. <laughs> and then I, I hovered Kaisa. So that was something I did. Um, and ever since, I've just always done it. It's just uh, my way, I guess, of just telling her that, you know, even when I'm like you know, in a stressful situation and worried, I still think of her. That was the idea. And I've always done that as a habit. And I think it, it helps me like ground myself as well when I'm in champ select, you know, it's just like, all right. Cause like, it was very stressful for me as a rookie actually, cause that was um, my Worlds event. So I met her before Worlds. And it was like really like a stressful time and she helped me like ground myself a bit. And, you know, I knew I was going to play fine as long as I played my own game. And Hovering Kaisa was like a way of me like grounding myself. Like I'm here, this is me, it's going to be all right. Yeah, tough year, tough year. I mean, it was tough for me because it was like, it was the first time I had to kind of decide what I wanted to do with my life. Because, um, you know, I was like 17, quit school, kind of tried to go pro for two years, didn't really. Fanata gave me an offer, the rest is history. <laughs> From that point until the year I took off, well, I didn't really take off intentionally. I just, I wanted to commit to playing in an A. And I guess it's important for people to understand why that is. But I felt like if I stay in Europe, I, I wouldn't really be able to distinguish myself much more than I already had. I'd never be considered one of the greats. I'd always just be, you know, a great personality that people love watching, but I'd never really do something that hadn't been done before. And playing in an A always appealed to me because I felt like maybe I could do something other people hadn't done before. You know, maybe we could go so much further. Obviously I didn't make it the world, so blows. And then the year after that, I also, um, didn't get hired in the LCS. I did get offers to play in Europe, but for me, you know, my personal life is very important. My partner matters a lot to me and us moving all our stuff to America was a commitment. It's not just me in my suitcase, like in 2018, you know? That's why for me, it was not an easy decision to leave Europe. And that's why for me, it was even harder to leave America. Cause like, this is where we wanted to, you know, make our life happen. League of Legends is, at the end of the day, a series of zeros and ones, right? It's all numbers. It's a, it's a computer game. You can math out your way to an optimal game. I suck at maths. Well, at least I suck at maths in the sense of like, I suck at formulas, but like simple maths like League, where it's like, you add up a gold value to another gold value. I'm good at that maths. The way the numbers work in the game decide how matchups go. So you need to be like very diligent with looking at the numbers of items and champions because they have a really great impact on how your champion behaves in the game. Like numbers and items and, you know, maths, like the numbers on your actual champion, how much damage does my Q do, how much damage does my W do or whatever. You have to acknowledge that that's really important. So that's why I think maths are so important in this game because they're simple numbers and you need to know them. That's it, yeah, I do suck at math. Like for me, FlyQuest appealed to me for two reasons because in that year I took off, I actually did some uh, public coaching. So I was doing public coaching and I, I, I grew some appreciation for the NA growing scene and people that are trying to get like great in, in, in NA. Because I think that it's, it's, it's pretty hard to excel when the rest of your environment is not trying to excel. And uh, FlyQuest wanted to, you know, keep their academy team. So that was the thing that I wanted, like, that I cared about. And, um, I thought, like, at that point, I was definitely like interested in working with an academy team and working with an academy top laner. Now I've come to realize that it's kind of tough to maintain the top two level and work with an academy team, unfortunately. But it's definitely something that I want to like, uh, that I would want in my ecosystem is having players that I can help uh, grow and kind of gain perspective on the game. Because I think that's the most, like that's the number one thing the scene lacks. Players don't get what they actually need to do. Everyone always thinks it's like, this is intangible, you know, like a great player does like intangible things. No, they don't. They do the same thing every game. I think when it comes to League, especially, especially in the back in the day, like I would like spend hours reading the wiki and like lore and all the stuff, like even to this day, you know, when there's a new champion that comes out, that's like awesome. I like read all the lore stories about them. Um, you know, catching up on like stories that I didn't read sometimes, you know, like, you know, Pantheon short stories or like Orn Volibear short stories recently that I read this year and I was like, wow, that's so awesome, you know, like, Pog Champ, <laughs> you know, like, woo, let's go. Like that for me is like uh, definitely a big part of my, uh, big part of my life. And I think that's also the reason why I'm so passionate about the game because of like the potential of the, the universe, you know, it's not just 
the video game. Like for me, it's like the characters and what they represent. Like that's like a really big part of why I love this game. If Riot has a different like ideas with their IP, I'll probably love that game too. Because for me, fundamentally, like I didn't fall in love with the genre of the game. Like it's the first MOBA I ever played. It was actually like an effort to get into MOBAs for me. But I love the characters and the idea of, 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 the, of the universe so much that like I overcame my innate uh, hate for change by going to a MOBA because I never played another MOBA before. I was stubborn. Getting into League, I was like really stubborn. I was like, I, I don't want to play League. Like it looks so annoying to play like that. And you have to nah, 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 blah blah blah. But uh, in the end, it got me good. And uh, ever since, it's all been League. <laughs>